Hi, I'm Cindy David, co-author of Financial First Aid for Canadian Investors. I've been a financial planner for 15 years. We're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about Retirement Planning 101. If retirement is on the horizon for you in 2010 and 2011, this is information that will be useful to you. When it comes to retiring, we say spend your fixed sources of income first. Uh, things like CPP and old age security. Those are income that are going to be coming to you whether you like them or not and need them or not. So we, we say spend from those first and then spend from your other non-registered investments. Not many people actually know what income they can expect from CPP and old age security. The current maximum for CPP is $934 a month. As long as you've been earning and paying tax on the yearly maximum pensionable earnings, uh, then you will qualify for the maximum income. You can take CPP early uh, at age 60 or you can wait until age 65 to take it. In another segment, we'll be talking about whether or not this is a good idea. The current maximum income for old age security is $517 a month. It's taxable income. Both CPP and old age security are adjusted quarterly for inflation. You don't receive your old age security until age 65. There's no option to take it early. This is an income tested form of um, support from the government. A lot of people think that their old age security is going to be clawed back. And the truth is, a majority of Canadians do receive either some or all of their old age security benefit. Uh, the clawback is quite generous. If you are earning less than $67,000 of taxable income as an individual, not per couple, then you will receive 100% of the benefit. If you're over the $67,000 of taxable income, they begin clawing back some of that income at a rate of about 15%. And they increase that percentage to 100%, but not until you reach over $108,000 of taxable income. This is a pretty generous form of income. And if you are, are a married couple, husband and wife, uh, both earning more than $108,000 of taxable income, um, you probably don't need the old age security benefit. Uh, when it comes to retirement, you spend from CPP, old age security, and any other uh, pension benefit. If you belong to a defined contribution pension plan or defined benefit pension plan, all of that income will go into creating what you spend in a year. If that's not enough to meet your retirement spending requirement, then you would spend from your non-registered investments first. This is true whether it's personally owned or corporately owned non-registered investment. And we wanna spend from here, we wanna supplement income from our non-registered investments because they're taxable as they're invested. And we've already paid most of the taxes on them. Uh, then we wanna spend from your RRSPs and other tax shelters like tax-free savings accounts last uh, to take advantage of the compounding that exists in them. The uh, rules around when you take money out uh, already exist and they've never changed. Uh, so when you get to be a certain age, the government is gonna force you to take money out of your RRSP. That age used to be 71 and then it changed to 69. It's recently changed back to 71. By the end of the year that you turn 71, you have to transfer your RRSP into a RIF. This means that you can no longer put money in and you have to start taking money out. But you don't have to take any money out in that year. It isn't until the end of your 72nd year that you have to take the RIF minimum percentage out. And that percentage for every Canadian is the same at 7.48%. Unless you have a younger spouse, you can choose your younger spouse's age to dictate the RIF minimum. Uh, and then it's based on a formula, which basically means between 4 and 5% for that number of years that your spouse is younger than age 72. When your spouse reaches 72, then you both have to be subject to that same RIF minimum, which is 7.48%. The minimum percentage increases every year. A lot of clients think that they're meant to deplete their RSV or RIF by the time they're age 90. That's not true. By the time you reach age 94, the government says you must take out 20% per year. And that often means that you will have depleted the balance of your RSPs by the time you reach age 100.